If you have your Bible with you this evening, come back with me again to where we were this morning, the Hebrews chapter 12, just for the first couple of verses. And this evening, with the help of the Lord, we'll take a look at, at verse number 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what sort of week you've had yourself, but this week from about Thursday, I couldn't wait to be back in the house of the Lord to be along with you to praise the Lord for his worthy to be praised. Amen. Just to come around God's word. And it's not because I'm speaking or I think I'm anything special, I've got anything to say, but I just want to be in the house of the Lord. Bless and it's something Lord. wonderful. Where when the two or three of us come together, we know that the Lord is there in the midst. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says this, Therefore, since we are encompassed with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let us look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. Thanks That's all Lord. I want to read this evening. We know the Lord will bless the reading of his wonderful, Jesus. wonderful word. You know, folks, we went through verse 1 this morning. Let's not take time this evening. If you want to know what we said this morning, it's still on Facebook. It's still on the social media sites. You can go and you can find it there. But you know, as I've spoken this before a good number of times. And it's really that looking on to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Folks, we need to learn again as a company of God's people to really to look to the Lord. To rely upon Him for absolutely everything that we need. To not just hold back in our prayers, not hold back in our praise, and certainly not hold back in our preaching, but look to Jesus. Whenever we're praying, we should be praying His will. Whenever we're praising, we should be praising His name. And you know, whenever we're preaching, we should be asking Him, Lord, give me your words to speak, because His words are life. Our words will fall to the ground. His words are eternal. And you yes, know, when we so think of it, folks, you, you could go away at this time next week, I could ask you, can you remember what we spoke on last week? Well, you wouldn't be able to tell me any of my illustrations that I would bring, if I bring any this evening. But you might just remember the scriptures that we read. Because they're the ones that are alive. Hallelujah. You know, looking on to Jesus, looking on to the Lord Jesus, the greatest example to the saint. There's, there's no greater. I know there's examples that we can have. We talked about that this morning very briefly, about the great crowd of witnesses that we can be blessed by, we can be so encouraged by those that have, even those that have gone on before us, the martyrs of the faith, those greats who, of the church throughout, down through the centuries, who we, we quote at times and who we look to at times, even when we're, we're putting uh, words together. I know whenever I'm putting a, when I'm putting a sermon together, I usually go to the two or three commentaries, and one of the commentaries I like the best is, is Spurgeon's commentary. And maybe that's why I think I drew the beard, no, I'm going to try and look like him. <laughs> but it's, it's certainly not him, you know what I mean? But that's all the same. But you know, there are those that we look to, even in the past, even those in Scripture, that we look to, the apostles and the disciples and those who God raised up at certain times. They bless our hearts and they do us good and they encourage us to run the race. With that wee bit more sparkle, as it were, because we want to please the Lord. But the greatest example of all is the Lord Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. The one that we strive to be like in all of our ways. That's what we should, we should get up in the morning and our prayer every morning should be simple as this. You know, Lord, thank you for looking after me throughout the night. Bless us this day. But this day, Lord, make me more like you. In my ways and in my speech and every person that meets, that, that they don't see me, that they'll forget who I am, but they'll say, they'll see Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's what this city of ours needs. This is what our country needs. We need people who will, will just glow, as it were, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And they'll not, they'll not remember us, but they'll remember who is in us. Hallelujah. And when they see us, they'll see Christ in us, as I've already said, the hope of glory. To see Christ's likeness in our conversations, to see Christ's likeness in our daily living and all of our business affairs and all of our affairs that we have. And for others, and this is my prayer, is for others to see Jesus in, in me. Love that we old hymn as well too. But I would love that others would see Jesus in me. If they wouldn't see me, they would see past me 
and see who it is that's in me. Glory to God. Folks, we need to fix our eyes onto Jesus every single day. We need to reset our focus. That was the whole of the big word last year, wasn't it? The one that we're, we're talking about resetting and restarting. But well, folks, here we are on a brand spike, a new year again. And I believe that we need to reset our focus upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, learn from the past. Yes, hold on to things you've, you've learned from the past as well too. But reset and refocus and say, Lord, I'm going to get my eyes off all of the things that have held me back in the previous year. And I'm going to look off onto you because I believe, oh Lord, you've got good things for me. And we should, we, should, we, should, we know that because we've, we've spoken on that even in recent times. The Lord says, I know the plans. I know the thoughts that I have for you. Plans to bless you, prosper you. All those things. Guys, let's, let's take them. I remember Billy speaking a number of years ago. And he, and he just used a very simple illustration about Christmas time. We get all of these presents and it's up to us. We can receive them. But it's up to us to open them. And then use them. Apply them. And God has so many, the Lord has so many blessings for us. But it's up to us as believers to walk and take them and say, Lord, they're mine. Hallelujah. And I'm going to use them for your glory. I'm going to use them for your honor. I'm going to use them for your praise. Hallelujah. Folks, as much as we need to fix our eyes upon the Lord Jesus in everything, we need to reset our focus. And I'm really preaching to myself this evening because there are times whenever our eyes are all over the place, yeah. on different circumstances, things can happen. All it takes, folks, is a phone call can just change your entire day. Never mind your entire life sometimes. You can hear a phone, you get a phone call and it can be such devastating news. But when we fix our eyes upon him, you know, he'll take us through all of those things. You know, as much as we can be truly blessed by seeing the great cloud of witnesses, the greats of the church, as I say, the martyrs of the faith, those who done incredible exploits, men and women of God whose service just truly excites us. You know, oftentimes I think of, of Daniel 11 and verse 32, the second part of that verse, and I can remember thinking one time, could we get it to fit on the back wall? To remind us every time we're walking out the door, but I don't know where we're putting it on the back But as this is simply this, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And we need to remind ourselves that we're encompassed about by this great cloud of witnesses who down throughout all of the centuries have done these incredible things for God. And that should stir our hearts as well that we should be saying, well, Lord, what would you have me to do? If Paul done this, Lord, what do you want me to do in this day and age? If, if Daniel done this in his time, Lord, what do you want me to do in, in, in this age? And folks, here's the thing. If you're a believer that says that all the miracles have stopped, I, I, want, to, I want to take a re look at that again this evening. Because God still works miracles today. Yes, your Lord. He still heals. He still saves. He still delivers. Hallelujah. Thank and, you, you know, his, his arm's not too short. He hasn't said, well, you know, we've tramped on so many years. We've got the Bible now. Guess what? We'll just stop all the miracles altogether. Folks, us being here tonight is a miracle in itself. You're saved. Glory to God. Your name's in the Lamb's book of life. You're redeemed. Not with things, comfortable things of silver or gold, but through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You know, oftentimes I think of George Muller, a mighty man of prayer who, in his time, all those, all those years ago, in Victorian, in that Victorian time, he prayed in a million and a half into his ministry. Then, folks, a million and a half. I can remember reading that one day, and I can remember thinking to myself about where we were at the church at that time with our mortgage and all that. A million and a half in Victorian times. Lord, what we need to pray in here is pennies. It's only buttons in comparison. Why should we worry anymore? And whenever you get delivered from all that worry, hallelujah, God begins to turn up and do amazing things in, in your life. And I've shared with you before about old Mueller. He went looking for a building one time, forgive me for it, but it's too good not to share again. You know, he was looking for a building, and he was told about a building in Bristol, and he was told there's two businessmen that own it. Go and speak to them, Mr. Mueller. So, of course, Mr. Mueller went and he met, met the two businessmen, and he sat down, and he, they said to him, we're looking so much for the building. He says, I'm not prepared to give you that. I haven't got that. And he made an offer for them. And the two of them laughed. They laughed. And they said, get out. Went, what do you think we are? I think we're fools. And they laughed them out of the building, as it were. And one of the advisors was there. And says, you know, you two men would be better just taking that, you know. And they said, why? That's miles below what we could get for this building. He says, no. 
If that man goes away and prays, his God will just give him the building for free. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's how our God works. Do you know something? Mr. Moore got the building. And he got it for what he wanted it for. Oh, hallelujah. Folks, this is why I believe that when we, we hear things like that, it should stir our hearts and stir our souls because, listen, there's a million and one things out the door that's going to bind you up and make you feel, oh, Lord, I can't do anything. And we tell ourselves that. And then we start believing our own lies. And we, so then we, before we know it, we could be all fired up tonight. And then by Wednesday, we could be, oh, Lord, I can't do anything for you. I don't know what you have called me for. Oh, and then by Friday you can say, Lord, just take me home. But you know, the Lord has something for us. Each of us. Hallelujah. Missionaries like, like Hudson Taylor. What a, what, a, what, a, what a man. Packed up all his stuff together in a, in a coffin. Because he wasn't coming back again. He was going out and that was him. And when Hudson Taylor went to China, what an impact he made on China. In fact, such was his impact on China. That whenever the Reds get in, the first thing that they banned was the gospel. Because they knew there's power in that. And if we want to stay in power, we need to subject that. Folks, it's happening in the West now as well too. Well, they have caught on to the whole idea. Let's subdue the gospel as best we can. Because there's power in it. They'll never subdue the gospel. They'll try to shut our minds. But they'll never shut us up. Glory to God. And you know, should one be cut down, God will raise up someone else. I often think of the martyrs as well. That's why I said to you this morning, read Fox's book of martyrs. It's a tremendous. It's a hard book to get through, but well worth it in the end. Uh, there's saints who were being burned for their faith. And as they were being burned for their faith, they, had, they were preaching the gospel. And they, you know, had the, the sticks were round about them and they were on fire and they were preaching the word of God. So, of course, they decided, well, no, what we need to do will cut out their tongues. So they couldn't speak, so they cut their tongues out, so they couldn't, they couldn't proclaim, proclaim the gospel while they were burning. So, of course, the church, they said, well, we're not going to have that. So the church, there was people called, and they, they knew, I'm going to be the next one for this fire. But as they were burning one saint, another saint was standing there and said, you want to know why this man's burning? He's burning because when they preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Folks, whenever, whenever you see revivals, you'll see great persecution coming upon the church. And you know, we've got it so very easy in the West, have we not? We've had very little persecution. In fact, sometimes, and forgive me for being fickle or being slight, but you know, sometimes we get annoyed when somebody walks past us and doesn't shake our hand. <laughs> oh, not back there. He never shook my hand. Guys, we need to go to ourselves. And we need to go to ourselves very, very quickly. We need to be men like, men like Jan Hoss, who when there, was, when there was very few Hussites, as it were, but he stood up against the apostasy of Rome and he, he lost his life. Men like Martin Luther and the great reformers, they, as we read earlier on, they endured the hardships. They went through all those things and many of them lost their lives for the faith. And of course, also the great preachers of the past, the likes of the Spurgeons and the Moody's and, and all of those boys that we look to and we go, Lord. Wow, all of the great revivals of all of those days. Lord, could you, could you do it again, Lord? And of course the Lord's going, I want to do it again. I'm looking for a people. I'm looking for a man. I'm looking for one that will stand in the gap. And you know, when we get excited, oh yes. But then when we turn to the word of God as well, and it's excitement as well too. What's holding us back, folks? It's ourselves that's holding us back. It's the old enemy that wants to hold us back because he knows the gospel is the power of God on the salvation. He doesn't want this place illuminated with the word of God. He wants us to see the place. He wants to see doors shut of churches. He wants to put plastic preachers into the pulpit and all of that. But folks, we want to be a people that will be on fire for God. Paisley said many years ago, he says, you know, you get yourself into your platform and go on fire. Be set on fire for God and people will watch you come and burn. Glory to God, folks. I want to see you guys come here and see our preachers go on fire for God and burn, hallelujah. Not burn out or burn up, but be on fire, constantly on fire. Pray for the preachers of this house that the Lord will, will, will bless and anoint us afresh time and time again. That whenever you come here, you'll say, you'll go home and go, it was worthwhile to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Why? Because we praised him. We met with him. And they brought the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And folks, even as we get excited about the cloud of witnesses, 
Our warning here this evening is this simply this. Don't fix our eyes upon them. You know, don't even look upon the, the race that they had or, or don't even look at the race or the, or the competitors out there side. And we're not competing against each other. I think you know what I mean by that. But we're running together. But what we should be doing is this. Looking to Jesus in everything. Before we take a step forward in anything this year as a church, as a, as a, as a believer, we should be looking to the Lord. Stop and say, Lord, first and foremost, what would you have me to do? When he tells you what to do, then Lord, lead me into that. And as he leads you into that, Lord, open the door that needs to be opened. Shut the doors that need to be shut. And bring us to your place and bring us to your point. Hallelujah. We need to be looking on to Jesus. Yes, it's great to think of the cloud of witnesses, but listen, even the cloud of witnesses, they let us down. The cloud of witnesses, are, while they applaud us this evening, aren't here for us this evening. Most of them are, are, are in glory. But you know, here's the thought, folks. Jesus is with us. The yes, Lord's Lord. here. With us every day. Every, every moment of every day. We need to look past the problems, and boy, oh boy, I'm probably one of the worst people to, to plan anything because I have an awful problem of over planning. I'll look at things and go, how could we do this? And I'll put down all the right down all the wee things and say, all the reasons for doing it. And then I'll stop and give you all the reasons for not doing it. And we need to stop coming with all the reasons for not doing it. And just go and do it, glory to God. Hallelujah. Look past all the problems and the situations and, and the feelings. And even at times and we've done things here in the field. Share with you before, some of some, some of you sure can remember this. I fully believe, and I'm happy to say this, fully believe that God was calling us to have a soup kitchen here. Some of you can remember it. And it was mad in our house on a Friday night as we were putting stuff together to have it here. And it was free. Anybody walking through the door on Saturday morning or Saturday through the day, they were getting their lunch for free. Free. Free grub. I couldn't believe what people wouldn't turn up for. They didn't t turn up. No, like nobody turned up. And in fact, we ended up feeding the church really, and that was okay. We had no problem with that. But we had a thing out the front: free lunch, and no one turned up. And you're going, and I remember getting on my knees and saying, "Lord, I really believe you called us to do this. Let's do it again the following week." So we done it the following week, and. Guess what? Nobody turned up and we done it the following week. We kept doing it, we kept doing it, we kept doing it. And then Sunday after Sunday we were just pouring big boxes of soup into the drains. And I'm going, Lord, yeah, I really felt that you were calling us to do this. You know, but it might not have been at that time. It doesn't mean to say we can't go back and we look at that again. You know, we need to do, don't let, the, don't let the, even the idea of, well, we'll try that in the past and fail. Sometimes we have to try and try and try again. Hallelujah. And it feels and feels and feels, but then the Lord's telling us something. And you know something, I've always, always said it, I would always, but I would always prefer to try and feel than fail to try, especially when it comes to God's work. Look past even through all the faults that we see and all the frailties of men and the frailties of the leadership and the frailties of the pastor and all of that and focus all together on Christ. Because when we focus on Christ, when we get our eyes reset and all to him, then verses like these will come to us. And they'll stir us even more. Isaiah 45 and 22 says, this is the Lord speaking, Look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. We need to go into this area around the house and say, Guys, we don't care if you come to our church, but we're going to invite you anyway. But what we want you to do is get your eyes off the sin. Get your eyes off everything that's going on and get your eyes on to Jesus. And when we start doing that, the liberty that we will have, the liberty that we can bring to the streets around about us, they will never know the like. And you know, then the, oh, the devil will be rattled, but don't worry about him. He's defeated anyway. He's just going about like a roaring lion, but don't worry about him because the Lord will protect us. Hallelujah. Look on to me and be seen. <coughs> What's wrong with people today is we think, Let's get them in through the door of the church. No. Let's see them saved in their home. Mm -hmm. Saved in the street. And then try to bring them in. Oh, hallelujah. Even the Lord Jesus. Speaking of himself to Nicodemus. That wonderful evening when Nicodemus came to the Lord Jesus. John 3 and 14 says this. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. 
Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And we know that in the time of the wilderness, when those fiery serpents were through the camp, anybody who was bitten by them, all they had to do was look at the, at the, at the serpent, the brass serpent that was risen up by Moses, and they were healed. And the truth of the matter is this, that spiritually all they need, all Belfast needs to do, all this, this countryside needs to do, is to look off on to Jesus. To, to, look, not to, to look at the cross and to accept that he has done that for me. And what a transformation will happen in their lives. In that moment when they accept Christ as Savior, they will be taken from a road which leads to utter destruction onto a path which leads to everlasting life. And I've said this to you before, everlasting life for me is going to be wonderful. Why? Because I've tasted of the abundant life here. And if this is what abundant life here is like for the same, oh Lord, what's it going to be like over there? If you think I'm bouncy here, woo, I'm going to be like tighter in heaven. I'm not going to be stopping. Oh, hallelujah. And if they say you say hallelujah too much here, will you see me when I get over there? Oh, glory to God. What a wonderful moment to think of it, you know, folks. Same for us. Christian, to see them. Look to Christ and live. Look to him. Look to him for your healing. Do you need healing this evening? Folks, we could all put our hand up there. Boy, we all need healing this evening. I laugh at times and I've said, I've said, I've said this. Can I not sit up here like, like Jimmy Swaggart and just sit in the big chair and sing with a microphone? Like how he does it in Baton Rouge. Because boy, oh boy, my back aches at times. But you just press on through. We all need healing. Let's look to him for our healing. Let's look to him for our comfort. You need comfort this evening. Because some of us do need comfort. Yeah. I don't mean to say that you're grieving, but you could be grieving within your spirit and within your soul. Things have come against you. Maybe even in recent times, or oh, there's going to be hurts there from the past that you're really trying to deal with. Listen, the Lord will comfort you. He's the God of all comfort. Mm. Hallelujah. Not only that, you know, what, what help do you need? He is our all in all. And let's not hold back in our prayers. You know, he knows us all together. We, but we should come to him and say, Lord, I need this. And spell it out. He, he knows. But we need to tell him over and over and over again. Glory to God. He's our all in all. He's our everlasting portion. That old hymn says, he's more than friend or life to me. We're not only just looking, but we're, we're leaning, are we not? We're leaning and we're learning from Jesus. We're learning from his ways. We're learning from his word. And we're knowing his will for our, for our lives, which is, which is truly incredible. I think those are the greatest things you can ever do. It's being saved and then knowing the will of God for your life. And then walking in the word of God and walking in the will of God. These are the great things. Hallelujah. <laughs> May our praise, may our prayers, and may our preaching never cease about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is the author and finisher of our family in hurry. Psalm 3 and verse 8 says this, Salvation belongeth to the Lord. That's the blessing. The blessing is, our blessing is upon thy people. He's the author. He became, by, he became by virgin birth. The Father sent his only begotten Son. And you know, he lived that wonderful, sinless spotless life he bore away our sin in his own body upon the tree his shed blood cleanses us from all sin and i know people point and say oh do you preach that you sin every day we all sin every day we all fall every day the bible says if we say we do not sin we lie we fall every day but that doesn't give us an excuse to just carry on and living like the world. We want to try and do our best. There's not one of us wakes up in the morning and says, Oh, I'm just going to live like a rascal all day and ask the Lord to forgive me at the end. There's none of us do that. We get up in the morning and say, Lord, I long for you to be with me today. Hallelujah. And he knows us all together. We put our faith and our trust in him. We know that he saves us. He brings us life. And through his death and his resurrection, we have that wonderful, wonderful life. But it doesn't end there. He saves, he brings justification and sanctification, glory. He breaks the bonds. He cancels out the sin. Praise he the finishes and he perfects. He's the author of it on the cross. And he's the finisher of it at the end. When we stand before him at the Bible seat, he's, that's where it's all done. And all the work he's doing here, day by day, he's making us more and more like him. And there's one day when we will be in glory. We will be exactly like him. 
in all of our ways. Oh, that really thrills me. Bless Remember Lord. Philippians 1 and 6. Be in confidence of this very thing. That he which hath begun a good work will complete it. Don't say might complete it. He will complete it. There will be no half-baked Christians in heaven. The way we complete and will be complete in him. And of course it goes on to say until the day of Jesus Christ. We need to remind ourselves of this daily to stop the enemy from making us discouraged. But you know something here, there's some million and one things out there that will discourage us. But when we keep our focus upon Christ, we'll keep away from the discouragement. Oh hallelujah, from the moment he saves us until the day he comes to take us home, we will be with him throughout all eternity. And glory to God, we will see him and we will be like him. And who, as, as, as I hurry along, who for the joy was set before him. And you know, folks, the Lord Jesus wasn't delighted about the cross. You know, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says, Not my will, Lord, but, but yours be done, thine be done. But you know what, he, but who for the joy was set before him, what does that simply mean? The Lord Jesus could look past the agonies that he was going to have to go through. He could look past the pains and the sufferings and the mockings and the blasphemies and all of those things that come against him again and again. And that, that those hours of darkness. And you know, he could see what was coming out the other end. What was it? What was at the other end? Souls saved. Glory to God. Hell plundered. Hallelujah. Millions, countless millions saved and rescued from hell and brought from under Satan's power. Isn't it truly wonderful? That's why he set his face as flint to go to Jerusalem. That's why he set his face as flint to go to the cross. And, 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 and yes, he was sorrowful because, because of what he was going to have to go through. And the one thing that, 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 that really bore him more than anything else was the fact that he was forsaken by the Father. When the Father turned his face away, when he was being made sin for us. Folks, he endured the cross. He set aside his deity to die for mankind. He set aside his title to be numbered with the transgressors. He set aside his will to do the Father's will. He kept the course set before him. And folks, we can learn so very much from this. Hallelujah. What a saviour we serve. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Endured the cross, despising the shame. He kept the faith, didn't he? And that's what we need to do. We need to keep the faith because Christ kept the faith. Yes. Because he believed, I lay down my life, but I will rise up again, glory to God. Oh, we need to run the race. We need to take up the cross and endure to the end. And of course, he endured the cross. And we joy in the cross. And I can remember learning this sweet poem when I was very young, well, a young believer. And it sticks with me when it comes to the cross. The cross of Christ is all my boast. His blood my only plea. That my pathway through the, through the realms of bliss is Jesus died for me. Thank Glory you, to God. Folks. Thank you, Lord. It's all in and through the cross. And he endured the Praise cross. You, Lord. And you know, he despised the shame. All the shame. They bore the false accusations. Imagine the one who speaks truth and always has ever spoke truth. They said that he was a liar. The one who brings us the word, who is the word of God. They said he was a blasphemer. He bore those accusations of blasphemy. He bore the judgment hall, the beating and the scourge. He bore the crown of thorns. He bore the mocking purple robe. He bore the spitting. He bore the wickedness of mankind that was poured out upon him. That right throughout those hours on the leading up to the cross. And he bore the cross. He bore the shame of being mocked. They, they mocked him while he prayed upon the cross. And not only that, folks, but he, he bore it all. He bore the shame of, the, of nakedness. The shame of hanging upon a tree because we know the word of God says, Cursed is he that hangs upon a tree. He bore all of our griefs and he carried our sorrows, despising the shame. Hallelujah. No wonder we say oftentimes here, thank you doesn't seem to be enough. You know, as I bring this to your close this evening, <coughs> Lord, help us to stand up for you in our generation. When we consider all that he went through for us, may we never, ever be shamefaced when we speak about him. May we never hide away from telling anyone the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. May we never hide away from the gospel. May we never, ever be ashamed of being a Christian or being one of his. And what I love about the final part of that verse we've read here this evening and he is sat down 
at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, there's a, there's a, a hymn, uh, and Willie showed it to me there a couple of weeks ago. I was in the new year. It goes to the tune of I Lang Syne, but the chorus of it just thrills my heart. And that's one we should learn for next year, ours, definitely. And, said, and the chorus says this, All glory be to Christ our King. All glory be to Christ. His rule and reign we'll ever sing. All glory be to Christ. And folks, this evening, where we are sitting here in Bali, still in England, and you know what we, can, what we know, and we can know with an absolute assurance, that he is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. I often pray, I close my eyes and say, Lord, pull back the curtain of heaven and let me see him. Let me see him in all of his beauty. Let me see him, because there's times whenever when we read the word of God, we can close our eyes and can you see him upon the cross? You can see him in the tomb. You can see him walking with his disciples along the Sea of Galilee. Well, don't you just long to see him high and lifted up? In the very place he left to come to, to suffer and bleed and die for us. Right at the right hand of God. And you know, folks, I'll say this rightly so. We consider the great victory that he wrought at Calvary. And we enjoy the benefits of this every day. Not only that, folks, but we can see him. And not only do we see him seated there, he's not sitting there doing nothing. We know that he intercedes for us every single day. Makes you, mention Lord. of your name and glory. Praise oh, you, hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, Lord. If that doesn't humble us, I don't know whatever mm-hmm. will. But you know, one day, folks, and I know that Stephen said whenever he was being stoned that he'd seen the Lord Jesus standing up to receive him in the glory. And I believe the Lord stands up to receive his saints, everyone that makes their way through those wonderful pearly gates. The Lord stands up and welcomes every one of them in. But you know, there's coming a day, folks, when he will stand up and come back for us. Oh, hallelujah. One day there's going to be a trumpet call. One day there's going to be a shout heard from the archangel. And we're going to hear that come away with me, my beloved. And we're going to wait meet him. And we're going to meet him in the air. Folks, what a day that's going to be. Oh, hallelujah. And the great that I see of this evening. Thank you, Lord. And we feel an awful pity for those who don't know Christ yet as Savior. But folks, that's this year. And even this week, even without making it about the year, let's make it this week that we really pray and pray hard and say, Lord, will you save those of our family who need saved? Will you bring them in, Lord? Will you gather them in, oh God, before they're gathered out? Because we know that's going to be, we know we're living in the last days of grace. That's only ours away, as it were, spiritually, before the Lord comes back to take us as waiting people home. And we don't want any left behind. We all want to go together in that bright morning. Hallelujah. There'll be no sorrow there. Oh, hallelujah. I can sing, but we won't. Let's just close in prayer, but thank the Lord for his goodness tonight. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word this evening. Yes, Lord. Lord. we thank you for the author of, of the book of Hebrews. We thank you, O oh God, that he told us all those years ago, and it's so apt for us today to look off onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord, for being the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, you could have left us. You could have left us to do our own thing, but, oh God, you loved us. Well, even when Adam fell all those years ago, Lord, you made even a way for him. And Lord, we thank you that you made a way for us through the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary. Thank you, Lord, you sent your son into this sin-cursed world that he might suffer, bleed, and die for us. Lord, help us, O oh Lord, in all these years later to live for him. And, and Lord, should it come to, to even die for him? Because Lord, we know that we receive a better resurrection if that be the case. Help us, O oh God, to live for you day by day, to deny ourselves, to put the old man in the flesh to death, O oh God, and Lord, to look to you. Father, we thank you for today here at Bali Sun. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the doors open again. Thank you, Lord, for the book has been opened, and Lord, praise has been resounding through the walls of this little building. But Lord, what we have here, we long that others would know it too. So Father, I pray you bless the live stream. Bless as it goes out across the internet. Yes, Lord. And Lord, I pray that souls will be saved. And Lord, we thank you for those who have been saved in the past, Lord, and those who have been restored back to the kingdom because of, of the simplicity of that little thing. But Lord, there we ask for more. We're praying, Lord, for revival. Revive us, Lord. Revive our homes. Revive our churches, we pray. But Father, I pray you would revive this little island of ours. Lord, north and south. Lord, I just simply pray that you would move across it in Holy Ghost power. Lord, in the darkest corners of, of the south, oh Lord, in the darkest corners of the north, I pray you would bring wonderful, glorious light. And Father, I pray you would use us 
to be part of it. Lord, just use us to be your hands and to be your feet. And Lord, to be your mouthpieces in this day and in this age, O oh God. Father, we thank you for the great cloud of witnesses. Thank you for your people, O oh God, that do so much encouraging. But O oh God, as we close, we thank you for the Lord Jesus and all that he has done. Lord, I pray you would bless us this week. Help our families, O oh God, and help this church. Help the ministries as David has already prayed for each and every one of them. Lord, we just pray again in agreement that you would bless everyone, Lord, and that you would add to your kingdom this week. So part us with your blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.